Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson one of the simple series of my 8086 assembly programming tutorials. The simple series is where we have a single assembly file each week and we look at a particular problem. Now, today we're going to be looking at sprite drawing and also moving a sprite. So, we're going to create a smiley, you can see it on the screen here, and the cursor keys are going to move it around the screen, or at least they are if I have the correct window selected. So, you can see our smiley is moving around the screen. It's also got boundary checking though, because the smiley cannot move off the screen, and the idea is that this could be the sort of foundation of a simple little game you know if you were trying to create a pong or some kind of shooter you've got an example here of how to get a sprite onto the screen how to read the key input and how to process the two so hopefully you could use it as a template for a simple game um, the equivalent of this on the Z80 was the basis for the YQuest game the um, YQuest games a series I did on the Z86502 and 68000 unfortunately you don't have time to do it on the 8086 which is a shame but anyway um, we're going to be looking at this today so let's go over to the source code and let's take a look. Okay, so here's the source code. As it says up there, all of the source code is available for download on my website, as are the build scripts. So you've got no excuse to give this a go yourself. We're going to go over the code and we're going to discuss how it all works. Now, the first thing we've got here is a definition of the um, model, which is the type of program we're making. We're making a small program and um, this is configuring how the layout is going to appear in memory. We're creating a small exe file here. We're defining some memory for the stack, 1024 bytes here, and then we're starting our code section here. There's not actually a data section in this one. We're just all in the code section. Now, the first thing we're doing here is we're turning on the screen mode. Now, we're using the VGA mode, which is one byte per pixel, 256 color. So we are turning that on with bias interrupt hexadecimal 10 here. We are selecting the mode in AL and we're selecting the function in AH. We're selecting function zero and mode 13 in hexadecimal, which is 320 by 200, 256 color mode. Now, we're selecting an X and Y position for our sprite here, um, and these are actually in multiples of eight, and the reason for that is a single byte couldn't contain a value of 320, so we've got to do some kind of approximation for that to work. Um, basically, this example is pretty consistent across all of the systems I cover, and it's this show sprite routine that is going to show a sprite to the screen. So let's have a look at our sprite. Our sprite is the smiley you can see here, and this is in um, byte data in line in the code here. Uh, you can sort of see with these E's here, there is a circle drawn, and that is the smiley. Now, if you want to know how to make your own graphic files, you can use my Acu Sprite Editor, which is what I use to convert all of my files for all of my tutorials. So um, if you've seen it in a tutorial, you can be pretty sure it's come out of Acu Sprite somehow. And in this case, this smiley was converted with the um, x86 menu, MS-DOS, save all bitmap VGA, and then I've got another program that I just used to convert it to text data so we can put it in line so you don't have to worry about ink bin commands, which vary depending on your assembler. Okay, so that's our bitmap. Now, how are we showing it to the screen? Well, we're using the show sprite routine, and this is using what's known as an XOR sprite, or at least what I refer to as an XOR sprite. This XORs the bitmap data of our sprite with whatever is currently on screen, effectively inverting what's on the screen with the sprite. Now, if what's on the screen is color zero, then um, it just shows the sprite as normal. But if what's on the screen already is something else, it will invert it. And if we've shown the sprite in the past and we show the sprite again at the exact same position, this completely removes the sprite and leaves what was underneath the sprite before um, back the way it was. So this is a really easy way to get started drawing graphics on the screen because you don't need to use any clever tricks to return the screen to the way it was if you've got some kind of background graphics. It does have the negative of making things a little bit ugly sometimes, but um, a fantastic game. I really like the Island of Dr. Destructo. Use these for all of the graphics and it's a fantastic game. So to claim that Exor sprites are not good enough is simply untrue. So I think they're a fantastic way of getting started because you can remove a sprite and draw a sprite with just one function basically and that's what we've done. So this is our function to draw a sprite and we're showing at position dh, dl, that's our x and y position. Now we need to of course know how our screen is laid out in memory. Um, it's the memory of the screen starts at segment A000 in hexadecimal and we need to calculate an offset and it's really easy on this system because each pixel is a single byte. Our screen is 320 wide and our sprite is 8 by 8. So what we're doing here is we're multiplying our X position by 8. We're moving in blocks of 8 across the screen here. So that's what we're doing there. And then we're moving down 
by a block of eight, but each line is 320 pixels. So we're multiplying by eight times 320 to move down the screen in blocks. And so we're then multiplying our Y position by that. And we are using that as an offset to the base, which is at segment A triple zero here. So we have now selected in DI the destination memory address for the graphics that we're going to draw to the screen. So that's what we've done there. What we're doing now is we're loading the offset to our bitmap into SI, and we're going to transfer bytes from our source data now in SI to our destination in DI. That's what we're doing here. So we are loading in a byte, effectively one pixel from our source. We're then XORing the current pixel on the screen, because as I say, we want to remove this if we're drawing it a second time. And we're then returning the result back to the screen, which is the source bitmap XORed with the current pixel of the screen. We're then increasing our source and destination here. And we're decreasing our X counter, which of course is eight, because we're eight pixels wide. And then once we've done a line, we're popping the destination, restoring it before we draw any pixels. We're then moving down one line by adding 320. We're then decreasing our Y counter. Our, our sprite is eight lines here, so that's gonna be eight lines we're drawing, and we're just repeating here. So that's what we're using to draw our sprite to the screen. And you can see that at the very start here, we're defining the start X and Y position, and we are showing the first position of the sprite here. Now, what we're doing next is we are going to actually read in the input and we're going to process it and then we're going to move the sprite accordingly. Now, the first thing we're doing here is we're using interrupt 16 function one here and that will check if any keys are waiting to be processed. It checks the key buffer, but it doesn't change it. So we're using that and then we're jumping if the zero flag is set here because that will be zero until a key is pressed. So we've got this loop here that just waits until a key has been pressed. When a key has been pressed, we need to remove the sprite from the screen. And because we are using an XOR sprite, we just need to show to the same position. Our position hasn't changed yet, so we just run show sprite to remove the old sprite. We're then using interrupt 16 again, but this time we're using function zero, which will remove a key from the buffer and it loads it into AH here. We're then comparing AH, comparing to each of the key codes. Now these key codes aren't anything particularly logical. They're, you just have to check the scan code tables to work out the keys you want. We're using up, down, left, and right here. And in each case, we're comparing to see if that key is pressed. Here we're comparing to up, which is 48 in hexadecimal. If it's not pressed, we're skipping to cursor not up here. Now, if up has been pressed, the next thing we need to do is we need to check if we can still move in that direction. So we're checking the y-axis here and we're seeing if the y-axis position of the smiley is currently zero, because if it is, we can't move up anymore. And if it is, we are again skipping over the next command to cursor not up. If it's not, if we're not at the top of the screen yet though, we are decreasing the y position here. That's what we're doing there. And then we're doing the same for down, checking the key press checking the direct, if we're already at the bottom of the screen, 24 lines down, 24 blocks down, sorry. Um, and then if we're not, then we're increasing the Y position. And then we're doing the same for X as well in exactly the same way. So we're processing all four directions there. And then the next thing we're doing is we're showing the new position of the sprite using our show sprite routine. And we're jumping back to the top here into our infinite loop here. And that's how we just move around the screen how we've got our smiley we can move around the screen but we can't go off the screen in any of the directions we are stopped so I think that's a nice simple little example as I say um, you could modify this you could use different bitmaps for um, you know a player and an enemy and things and you've got your reading in of the keys for the processing of the gameplay anyway there we go so as I said earlier you can go to my website you can download the example for today and you can give it a go yourself and as I always say it's pretty unlikely but if you somehow manage to build this into some amazing game you're welcome to do so of course all of the source code and build scripts are there on my website for you to make use of so go ahead and have some fun with them anyway if you've liked what you've seen please hit the like button if you like the videos YouTube recommends them to more people at least that's what I'm told and if you subscribe that would help me out as well it encourages me to keep making these videos and also you'll see the um, future videos that I've got on this subject as well anyway I hope you found this useful thanks for watching today if you've enjoyed this video today please consider supporting my content it takes 20 to 30 hours a week to keep making these videos it's basically all I do when I'm not doing my day job and it's only through the support of my patrons and the other sponsors that I'm able to continue justify doing it essentially you can back me on patreon I post a 
weekly update with the latest work on the current projects I'm doing. You can see one here and also the newest videos. There's a large backlog of videos that are currently only available to the patrons, although they will all be available to everyone later on. And also it's the backers who I ask when it comes to making decisions on how to change the content in the future, what new content to create and things like that. You can see there was recently a survey of the backers so I can plan next year's content. As well as Patreon, you can now become a member of my channel on YouTube. There's a join button you should see just below this video. You can use that. YouTube backers get the same content as Patreon. I just post it through the YouTube interface instead of the Patreon. It's the same content every week. Also, if you prefer, you can go to my Teespring store and you can get some Chibi Akamas merchandise or some Learn ASM merchandise if you prefer, if that's how you'd like to back me. Links for all three are in the description of this video below. Uh, anyway, whatever you decide to do, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.